So my name is Jode Roberts and I work for the David Suzuki Foundation. And I lead the Rewilding Communities program for the Foundation and that involves a lot of programs that are connecting people to nature in their neighborhoods, getting people active in gardening and, and connecting to birds and bees and butterflies and native wildflowers in their yards. So native plants are ones that have evolved here, so they're adapted to the soil, they're adap adapted to the amount of rainfall and the different uh, climate conditions we have. So the first step in um, creating a, a pollinator paradise in your backyard is to um, take a look to it, do an inventory of the, the spaces that you have. So there's a variety of different plants uh, depending on the soil and, and the sun exposure you get in your yard. So if you go to native plant suppliers or native plant nurseries, you'll find that they're experts in finding the right kind of native, native plant, the right wildflowers for, uh, for spaces in your garden or yard. So there's these connections between insects and plants and, and the environment, and all of these connections make up this food web and the ecosystems that support us. So who knew that we needed bumblebees for my tomatoes, but, but it's really essential. So when you're selecting uh, native plants and wildflowers and shrubs for your garden, um, one of the benefits is that they will end up being less work um, because those plants have co-evolved with the climate and the soil in, in your community. So it means that there's going to be less maintenance required. So when there's drought and you know your, your lawn or lawned areas in your community go brown, that's because it's a grass species predominantly that was from Asia and isn't intended to grow as we've grown it. Um, in, the, in this climate. So native plants um, are more drought tolerant, so that means they need less water through the year and through those really hot uh, periods that we get throughout Canada and in all of our communities. Um, these are the plants that will really be tough and survive and it means you, you know, you know uh, sit back and have a drink and, and uh, kick up your feet rather than doing a lot of the maintenance that comes with plants that are from exotic places. And so the City of Toronto and other uh, municipalities uh, over the past few years have really gotten behind this idea of uh, protecting pollinators, of doing things to, for bees and butterflies. And that's really crucial because uh, pollinators and insects, they are the foundation of our food webs. And so one out of every three bites of food uh, you, you eat on a regular basis, including my beloved coffee, they depend on insect pollination and especially pollination by wild bees and butterflies. So one of the joys of the Butterfly Way project and the work that North American Native Plant Society and others do is that we're taking these small actions in our community and they seem like tiny actions. They are tiny actions. Planting, you know, in my yard or a balcony or, or your local park or, or faith institution, they're small gestures, but when you start to aggregate those together, we're creating butterfly ways through our neighborhoods. We're starting to bring a, a bit of nature back. And there's community, community that's built through that, so I can have conversations with neighbors, maybe share those tomatoes or, or the, the milkweed that's uh, growing in my backyard now. So I think there's a lot of uh, benefits to these types of programs that really ground people, connect them to nature, um, but also we're doing our part for the bees and the butterflies.